Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Jesse's Path. And as you can probably tell from the music, this is a little bit different. And that's because, thanks to a couple of the devs, I found an Easter egg where you get to pet the pet the pupper's tummy. Also, this is a complete redo of my of a uh, video I had filmed earlier today. I can't show it on YouTube, it's got so much stuff in it, I just can't, so I think for the duration of this run, guys, I think I'm going to be doing censored. We'll see, because this, I, I can't show the, I can't show the uncensored version of this video on YouTube, they would nuke my channel from orbit. <laughs> they would declare exterminatus on Drake Wing Gaming, and that would be it, so... This is going to be a bit of a more censored playthrough, but it should encourage you guys to go play the uncensored version for yourselves. Go give the devs some love. But anyway, guys, let's uh, let's let's pet this pupper's tummy. Let's pet the tum tum. Jesse loves belly scratches, especially when you find just the right spot. Can you find and scratch all of her itches before time runs out? Uh, the the tum oh. Yes. What do we got? Yes! Make the legs scritch! Got it. Got it! Do it! Do it! Come on! Yes! Make the legs scratch. There we go. Do it! Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Oh! Oh! Damn it! No. No. No, 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 no. No. We're loading. We're loading. We're doing this again. We're scratching the pupper tummy. Alright. There we go. Alright, come on. We can do it! Let's do it! Let's get that tummy. Let's get that tummy. Do it! We're almost there! Yes! Tubby scratches over the finish line! Thank God I've got such a good memory. What? No! No! I'm clicking everywhere, damn it! Anyway, it seems I have found the spot. I'm reminded of our battalion mascot, a short-limbed corgi we called Sergeant Stumpy. Okay, let's uh, go forward a little bit. Guys, I did what I could. It did not work. Okay, here we go. Alright, so this is the censored version. She gets up and begins tracing the crest of the hill, her nose to the ground following a trail invisible to human eyes. I scan the shadows, worried someone or something may have spotted us. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I see movement. It's just Jessie. She is pawing at the ground and sniffing around the area intensely. Uh-oh! Run, bunny, run! A tiny shadow darts out from under her nose. A rabbit, rudely awakened by this uninvited guest. Oh god. Run, bunny! I breathe a sigh of relief, only to suck it in again, when I see Jessie bolt after her quarry. Jessie, wait for me! I hastily grab her clothes, and take off after the paracing pair. I was outmatched before, but now, in this form, Jessie positively leaves me in the dust. They barrel down the hill toward a stone wall, one that marks the bounds of a, pad of a paddock full of Agnes McGregor's sheep, including the oob we used as bait just a few days ago. My mind races. Things could go badly very quickly if Jessie's found terrorizing Agnes Angus's flock. I need to get her home. I need to get her to come back. Ah, uh, this one seemed to have the best effect. Let's save that. This is the Tum Tum Run. Listen. Instinctually, I whistle to get her back. 
I feel like such a buffoon. She's like, bitch, what you doing? She's like, what the hell was that? Jesse turns around to look at me, distracted just long enough for the rabbit to disappear into a thicket. The rustling recaptures her attention, and she goes back to sniffing the poor critter out. Jesse, come! I muster my most authoritative voice, and am completely ignored. It comes as no surprise. This is no household pet, nor has Jesse ever been the sort to take commands. <sighs> at least now that she has stopped running, I am able to catch up. You're in the you win the race yet again, my dear. Now, how about we leave Mr. Rabbit alone? That's enough excitement for one night, don't you think? You're like, nope. Little Jesse makes a sound that I interpret to mean she has much more important things on her plate. I sigh. It seems no matter what form she takes, Jesse will do as Jesse will do. But what will I do? It's clear I can't leave her to her own devices. She's already shown a penchant for getting into trouble. I laugh to myself. If only I thought to bring a leash. Not that she'd take kindly to one, even if I had. I imagine those jaws tearing clean through it. All that's left is to appeal to her heart to heart. You know what you really are, Jesse McLeod. You're a sheep in wolf's clothing. It feels odd speaking to an animal like so. I remind myself Jesse is in there somewhere. See that. This form of yours may look fierce, but inside you're kind, sweet, loving, and gentle. You're but the lamb. She finally turns her head, looking at me nonplussed. Well, most of the time. What I'm trying to say is, I admire every single thing about you, even this manifestation of all your confidence, resilience, and courage. Your wild side. <laughs> There you go, he said the right words. I take the fur coat from my shoulder and hold it out in front of me. She must recognize it, right? Her golden eyes scan the jacket up and down. Would you like to slip into something more comfortable? Something a little less frightening to small critters? I know you don't want to eat that silly rabbit. All that fur in your teeth. What a terrible, what a terrible nuisance that would be. That's right, your makeup will come all off. Your hair will wuss, your hair will muss. Wouldn't you rather come back and nibble on my ear instead? Yeah, a wolf nibbling on your ear is probably not a good idea, dude. Her gaze lingers on me for a moment, then lifts to the moon. I wonder what is going on through her head. Does she understand? Has she understood anything I've said? Please. It strikes me that, if I am responsible for any of this, my sheer will alone is not turning her back. No matter how hard I picture her human, it's just not working. Please, Jesse, for me. Hmm. <clears throat> so adorable. <clears throat> Pretty wolf. At last, Jessie comes over. She sniffs the jacket curiously, then spins several circles and lays down beside me in a tight ball. I drape the coat over her, partly relieved. Partly because now that comes, now comes the hard part. No incantations, no potions. Just me, Jessie, and our will. Her will, to make this work. But whatever disrupted the process in Alana's house foil our attempt here? Much has changed since that night. I only hope our connection is strong enough now to overcome it. She can't stay like this. She just can't. The wind whips up the grass, and I lean into the energy that begins to envelop Jesse. Mesmerizing patterns begin to ripple across the fur. Does it belong to her or her coat? It's hard to tell in the low light. I try to focus on our connection, and my heart beats more rapidly. It's a shared energy now. Am I helping or hindering? It's impossible to know. Okay, well, at least that's covered up. Moments pass, or perhaps an eternity. The wind dies down and a peace settles across the hillside. Malcolm. From under the folds of her coat, Jessie's head, her bonny human head, emerges. Even though they no longer glow, she gives me those big puppy dog eyes. Malcolm, are you alright? I would laugh if it weren't paralyzed up by awe and relief. The mix of emotions must show. Am I all right? You're the one who was recently walking about on all fours. Jesse pulls the coat around her and sits up, seemingly more phased by the chill air than the whole affair. In fact, judging from her expression, she seems most concerned about me. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for disappearing, for worrying you. 
I'll be sorry. Just maybe tell me next time you're going to leave me. Oh, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm allowing something in. It's a force. It takes over and I let it. Hearing her tell me of this power makes me even more curious. Why? Why would you want to lose yourself? Jesse looks off toward the clouds, gathering above the moon. This time was different. I wasn't confused or frightened like before. It's like slipping into a new dress, one that's terribly uncomfortable at first, but then, over time... She looks at me, she looks me in the eye. It's like you remember how everything is supposed to fit. It's exhilarating, from head to my toes. What? What are you thinking? When you can't talk to me? When you won't answer me? I, I have a hard time remembering everything exactly as it is. It's kind of a trance, a pleasant memory, but one you can't recall on command. I think back to every time I laughed in the trenches, a spark of joy in between all the madness. What did we ever find funny? Why did we ever laugh? I realize I've put myself in a bit of a trance these past few days, years even. Just to survive, to be happy, to enjoy anything. You say that. <clears throat> I think I understand, in a way. Malcolm, when we made love, I remember so much of it. But there are seconds that passed that were nothing but a blur of kisses. It's like that, sort of. Oh, I hope I'm not saying it the wrong way. No, Jesse, I believe you. I've had those moments, too. Times when you think you'll remember every reason for bliss, but you only remember the emotion. Yes, it's just like that. Thank you for helping me find the words. I truly can't believe how well you understand me. I chuckled, certain that my understanding barely scratches the surface. Well, I'll tell you who won't have any trouble remembering this encounter. The rabbit. Oh, Malcolm, the poor thing. I wasn't going to kill the rabbit. I knew it. I just couldn't fight the instinct to go after it. What are you going to catch it? Bite it? It did worry me. <clears throat> it's one thing that still makes me scared, too. I'm not sure. It's as if I know I don't want to hunt. I simply crave the chase. But without you here, how would I get back to myself? To you? We don't know yet. We only know it's possible. I kissed the top of her head, trying to continue to reassure her despite all my misgivings. She may not have a violent streak, but there's something bottled up in her that's preventing her from gaining full control over her behaviors. Neither of us know where that could lead. We only know what she's already had to endure. I could hear you. Every word. I just couldn't respond. Hey! You... you called me a sheep in wolf's clothing. Why, whatever do you mean by that? Do you think I'm weak? I'm not. I promise you that. Weak? No. <laughs> Anything but. This is the Jessie I miss when she's a wolf. I miss her spunk. I miss talking to her. I just meant that sometimes you don't an exterior that keeps others at bay. And I don't just mean your fur coat. Don't be afraid to let people in. To love you for you. Not who you think you would be. It's no facade, Malcolm. It's not my fault these village types can't appreciate a modern woman. Aye, there's a lot more to you than Wished Club can wrap their heads around. That's for sure. Malcolm, that's why I don't... That's why I don't know if I can stay here. I don't believe you can, or will. Fair enough. But I'm willing to take it day by day. That's all either of us need to do for now. Besides, you can't promise me you'll join me in the city. Am I not allowed to ask for that? To want that? You are. And I'll continue to tell you I'm flustered, confused, overwhelmed. I don't have an answer for you other than that I want you to stay here. For your safe as possible. For your... With you? Yes. Is that so wrong? No, Malcolm. It's entirely right. Atop the hill, we relax in the damp grass. I place my arm around her neck. Jessie slips her body around mine and squeezes my shoulder. She kisses me assertively and pulls away quickly. I'm sorry. I know you're trying to have a serious conversation. To reassure me, here I am just wanting to ignore it all. To be intimate. Don't ever be sorry for that thing like that. I reach forward and touch her face. Her cheek is so soft and flush with heat. Don't you ever feel like life is just so short? No one knows what's to come. Life. Same right here. I agree, more than she could ever know. We've both been through our share of horrors. She stops and looks at me, tears welling in her eyes. 
What's Jesse? What's wrong? Life is just so goddamn unpredictable. I can't think straight. I can't even remember life before this. Life before you. My grandfather would say, you can always bet on the fact that you can't bet on anything. It's true, isn't it? One second, guys. We both lift softly and I pull her closer. When her eyes meet again, I am lost. Lost in her embrace and the scent of her lingering jasmine perfume. Lost in the thought of holding her closer to me all night. I know I haven't been very I know I haven't been back very long. In some ways I feel like I've just met you, but I know you. I know your soul. I feel the same way, exactly. I know how my head and heart feel. You're in my thoughts every minute of the day. My heart aches for you when I'm not around you. My heart aches for you too, Malcolm. I haven't felt myself since haven't felt myself since you came to town. Or quite honestly, I felt more myself. More free to be who I am, if that makes any sense. Do it. Do it. Do it! I reach out and stroke her cheek. As I gaze into her eyes, I feel my hand slide lower across her cheekbone, down her neck, stopping at her shoulder. Beneath her open coat, her bare skin is exposed. I feel her shiver under my touch. Malcolm. Just hearing her speak my name sends me to the edge. I immediately press my lips hard against hers. Censored. Censored. Oh yes, very incredibly censored. Oh wow, they just completely skipped that part. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I could not show m pr pretty much any of that on YouTube. It was far more explicit than the last one. Ah, there you go. As we drift off to sleep side by side, her warm body pressed into mine, I almost can't handle the feeling. My heart wants to burst from happiness, relief, excitement, and fear. I can't lose this girl. I've let her know what she means to me. This is now much more than a one-night stand. What if we're growing too close, too quickly? I don't think I could handle a separation. My heart could- my heart would be crushed. I'm too dedicated. I replay her saying, I love you in my head. Her cadence, her clarity, her fear. I whisper another, I love you in her ear. When I hear my words out loud, I feel at peace. I've never said those words to another woman. I love you too. And now you've heard them said to me again. What an honor, a gift. It's a confirmation of something unknown. I don't know if either of us comprehend the meaning of the word fully. Is this a commitment, a promise? I need more reassurance right now. I don't need more reassurance right now. I think I'll think more on it in the morning once I've had time to rest. I watch Jesse's eyes close and see her drift off. Her chest rises and falls with each inhale and exhale. The breeze outside blows softly across her ears and muzzle. I want to kiss her once more, but to refrain. There'll be plenty more in the future, I am sure. Eventually, I let myself fall asleep, knowing that my heart, whether I tried to stop it or not, now fully belongs to another soul. Such a touching moment. Daytime. Ah. <laughs> Dayman. Ah. Fighter of the night, man. <laughs> There's a pep in my step the following morning. Grand stays mum, but she eyes me knowingly as I fill my plate with toast and oat hash. She didn't catch me sneaking back into the house before sunrise, but the twigs in my hair and grass stains on my shirt aren't exactly subtle. I better say something before she does. Hopefully it's a subject that'll be easier to discuss now that Gran has seen Jesse shine on stage. So, how did you enjoy the show last night? Gran smiles and opens her mouth to speak, and then stops, bites her tongue, and sips her water. Finally, after some awkward clinking of forks and knives and glassware, Gran admits something I wasn't expecting to hear. I had a very lovely time. It was nice to see Bogart, of course, and, again, and to get out in the evening. It's something I've not done in quite some time. She plays with her food a bit, stalling for time, it seems. And yes, 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 certainly a star. Her voice is breathtaking. So is her uh, physique. I smiled behind my napkin. I'm glad you went with us. I had a nice time as well. 
Yes, but I still have reservations about you two uh, being together. I nearly choke on my hash. What? Why? Grant sets her civil war down, and I know she's going in for her speech. I steal myself. Malcolm, but quite frankly, I'm a selfish old woman. I see how you look at Jessie. Gran's voice cracks and tears form. Gran, what's wrong? And I see how she looks at you, and I just know. Know what? But I believe I already know the answer. You're going to leave. To leave me. Her tears become brief sobs until she gains her composure and, whisk and wipes her face with her handkerchief. I quickly stand to give her comfort in a hug. I won't leave you, Gran. I couldn't. Sit, Malcolm. Eat your breakfast. Pay no mind to my outburst. I do as I, I do as told, pulling my chair closer to my grandmother, just to place a hand on her arm. Jessie is a wonderful girl. You two make a pair for the ages. But I see. You're worried, Willie. You're worried. <clears throat> Blah. You're worried we'll up and leave you. Oh. Okay, guys, there we go. Alarm Chan is telling me that is the end of the censored episode. Um, I don't know if I can get away with uploading the uncensored one without doing some absolutely crazy amounts of editing to it. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what I can get away with. Uh, yeah. Uh, do I want to risk it, though? That is the question. Well, that is a decision for myself to make. Um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!